Psalm 73. We ended up last week on a point that I did not anticipate or expect. And I taught about the tabernacle of David. And in the book of Acts, there was a covenantal promise where the apostle stands up and says uh, through the mouth of God that there was a tabernacle that he would restore from the ruins. That the thing, the agenda, the motive, uh, or the modus operandi of God in heaven at that moment would be to erect another tent. Will you just say another tent? I'm going to say another tent. Now, this was before the tent of the temple became stationary. Pay attention. Before the tent of the temple became stationary, he created it where it could move easily, a, a flexible tent, a, a, a host that could move and carry. And oftentimes when you're dealing with the spirit of religion, legalism, tradition, ignorance, error, idolatry, debauchery, hedonism, you're dealing with something that has claimed a territory. But in God's genius and in God's brilliance, when he wanted to be hosted and his presence to be experienced amidst and among his people, he said, I want you to create something that can host me, but they do, don't create something that stays where it is. Create something that's capable of movement and momentum. So you find several times and places in the scriptures where whoever was uh, responsible for teaching the, the protocols and the protocratics around hosting the ark, where God would give them instructions on how to build something that could move. It could, it could house it and move. And sometimes many of us, w w w we're good at housing it and hosting it when it's where we want it to be. The challenge comes in is when we receive instruction from God uh, to take this thing, this presence, this communication system, this compass, and, and go from where you're comfortable into where you need to go. Will you look at your neighbor real quick before I give my text and say, I have bad news for you. Open your mouth, say, I have bad news for you. The God of heaven is calling you out of your comfort zone. started talking about the tabernacle of David. I ain't preaching yet, governor. When we started talking about the tabernacle of David, we talked about his lineage. Pay attention. We talked about his life, his struggle, his worry, and why God promised that if there was any tabernacle that caved in, a model, a pattern, a precept, a paradigm that became antiquated or old, I will let most of them lay in the ruins, but there is one tabernacle and there is one concept and there is one paradigm that won't ever be able to stay sleep long. And that thing is going to be called the tabernacle of David. And from the root and the offspring of Jesse will come David. And out of David will come the Messiah, the lion as it were, of the tribe of Judah. And he could have come through Abraham. He could have come through Moses, could have come through Joshua, he could have come through one of the judges, but there is a royal and there is a patriarchal and there was a monarchal system that came out of heaven into earth that meant that something blemishless needed to be born through something imperfect. I want you to know that a part of the story of the tabernacle of David is how something perfect can be born from something broken. I'm not even at my text yet. I want you to see the beauty and the depth of why David's tabernacle was the preferential abode of God. It's because before David and Solomon created their tabernacle, slow down, other people were treating him like the guest of honor. When you come in, we give you some snacks. When you come in, we give you a visitor basket. When we come in, there's some mints over there, some water over there, and then an usher will take you there. But that still makes you a visitor. It makes you somebody that's touring something that don't belong to you. So I'm here to submit to you, beloved. He is not the guest of honor. Because if, if he's the guest of honor, he is not the head of the house. I want you to know we've got to stop treating God like he's our special guest. And we've got to treat the Holy Ghost like we want his abode. Lord have mercy. We want him to tabernacle. We want him to make Emmanuel among his people. Sorry. When you live your life like he's your guest, there's a checkout time. There's a check-in time. You can put the room in the name of an alias. Anything comes and goes there. But when he owns the thing, lift your hands and scream, I'm yours, Lord. I let me let me slow down. Okay. Balfour, you got to be quiet because you'll make me preach harder. Psalm 73. Verse 1. You there? 
Truly, God is good to Israel. <laughs> You're not safe for real. That's enough for me. Truly, God is good to Israel. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Let's read this together. But as for me, which meant that whoever is writing this particular psalm does not see themselves in the equation of Israel. He contrasts God's behaviors, reactions, responses to those that look like they have pure hearts. And then in verse 2 he says, but as for me. Which means that somewhere in the internal nature and system of this writer, he feels that he is exempt from God's behavior and kindness and consideration. As for me. Yeah, I'll get that. My feet were almost, while you were being good to Israel, my feet were almost gone. Come on, let's go. While you were being good to Israel, come on, open up. I'll let you go get some Taco Bell. My steps had well nigh slipped. I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Open up. Come on. For, for, for there are no bands in their death, but it looks like their strength is also firm. Come on. They, they don't seem like they are in trouble as other men. They, they're not even plagued like other men. They, they, therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain, and violence covereth them as a garment. Basically, what the writer is saying, they do what they want and say what they want and live how they want and go where they want and they live their life without a standard and they get promotion I wish I had 10 I just need 10 loud mouths to agree with me real quick they live ratchet and whoremongering and it seems like everything always works for them but here I am fasting praying celibate paying these stupid tithes walking these dogs and I get fired from my job and here go Jazzy Jazzy getting promoted I don't know if um their eyes, this is verse 7, C calm down, with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. Watch me. They are corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Wake up. They set their mouth against the heavens. and they, Their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither. A waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how does God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They do increase in riches. But verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. Apologized for nothing. Repented for no reason. Took responsibility for a lunatic. Knew they was wrong and knew I was right. But to look humble, went ahead and bit the bullet so y'all wouldn't kill me again. I went ahead and just go ahead. I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. I've cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency, innocency. Verse 14. For all the day long I've been plagued. I've been chastened every morning. Come on, y'all. It's almost at my point. Don't rush me. For all the day long I've been plagued and chastened every morning. Thank you, Vontae. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I will offend against the generation of thy children. This is for those of us that have accepted, right or wrong, that you can't handle how I really feel. I just, <laughs> I'm going to spare you by not telling you what I really think about you and what you did. Come on, and, and how you acted and what I experienced. I'm going to package it in such a way where it's palatable. And in the expense of that, I become oppressed. I'm almost at my point. I will offend against the generation of thy children. Watch this. Verse 16. We're almost there. Don't rush me. When I thought about this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17 is my sermon, Elder Camila. Trav, tell your entire department to remain seated I'm going to ask them to leave and go to another church. I refuse to bear the stigma of an unruly, wild, 
bunch of people born in the wilderness. <laughs> Verse 17. It was too painful. That's verse 16. It was excruciating. Didn't think it would ever stop. 17. The title of this message is Until. Until I went. I don't have help. Until the sanctuary of God. Then I understood they're in you set them in slippery places casted them down into destruction how are they brought into desolation as in a moment and utterly consumed with terrors as a dream when one awaketh so lord all thou that wakest shall despise their image thus my heart was grieved i now felt bad for those that hurt me please be seated until it's the title of this message. I'm going to be real quick. The, the word is preached itself. Uh, the man's name was Asaph. And Asaph was not one of the foremost writers or contributors to what we know to be the Bible. He was a supportive writer. So he wrote based upon what he learned and believed and admired amidst his predecessors. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. So part of what that means is that if I watch your life and I observe your testimony, be it up close or from afar, I can retrieve wisdom from how you live and who you are and what you do. Paul was not lying when he called us living epistles to be read. People are learning from your life. God knows that there won't be a paper Bible available for every person on the planet. Scream, yeah. Yeah. But there is a person for every person and a problem for every problem if we will live out what we've learned before God. So yes. So somebody's learning from how you're living. And somebody's leading from how you're living. Come on. And somebody's thriving from how you're resilient. Look at you. There is a reason why the Holy Spirit has come into your life, Evangelist Lachelle, beyond hookah messiah, shit about a Honda, but about a Kia. There is something deeper than that before God in you. And a part of what that depth of the Holy Ghost is in you is to help you never again stumble off of what they have against what you need. Asaph wasn't the main guy. He was somebody who watched a guy live it out. And, and, and he watched how he won the war and watched how he made his decisions and watched how his business remained his business and how his uh, propaganda and agenda remained what it was supposed to be and not fail. He watched David's failures and David's successes and David's flaws and David's uh, feats and David's movement and David's programs, propaganda and agenda. And he wrote what he was learning from the life of David. Now, I want you to know that this is very important to understand in this text because the people that live the most reckless are those that don't realize that somebody is learning from your life. Will you stare at somebody who needs a mint? Don't be embarrassed. Tell them your next trial. Open your mouth. Why y'all so shasty? Tell them your next trial might be my textbook. Y'all are disobedient. Say your next trial might be my next textbook. I need you to get through this. Asaph writes, and I don't know that Asaph was ever privileged enough to be in TMZ. <laughs> I don't know that he was famous enough to be the angle of somebody's criticisms, ridicule, or anything like that. He was known because he worked in the tabernacle of David according to the book of 2 Chronicles. So he was among Asaph and Jejuthun and Iddo and Gad. And he was with Nathan and they were over there doing a shed. That's not an American precept or principle. It was been done in the Bible. They would get together and just play and just come up with lyrics. And sometimes the only thing that they would sing in David's tabernacle 24-7, Fonte, is the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And, I, 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 and what I love about it, I'll get there later because y'all don't want this, is there, you can't run out of ways to sing the Lord is good. 
I'll talk to some real worshipers later. There are too many melodies that can make that thing do what it's supposed to do. But because you don't believe it, you won't receive it. Lift your hands and say, the Lord is good. And his mercy and do I'll meet you at school of worship for that one. How many ways can we say the Lord is good? The goodness of the Lord is as big as the character of the Lord, so we can sing of that forever. This is why that's the most repeated scripture in the Bible. The Lord is good. That's all we got to say. Anyway, so he worked alongside, forgive me, all of those guys, and he's there in the tabernacle of David, and there's dancing, and there's fastings, and there's offerings, and it's nonstop. Deep breath real quick before I get to the meat of where I'm going. Inhale, come on, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Good class. Exhale. It's about to get worse. You think you were burnt out before? You think you were tired before? I'm going to stay in my office. You think you were weary and confused and, and nervous and you wanted your own time and your own space and your own dream and your own vision board and you just want to live in my life like you go and then live it right. Get ready for the refiner's fire. I prophesy fire on everybody that's trying to live their life like it's golden. Baby, you barely submitted. You barely consecrated. You are an uncrucified Christian, which means that there is nothing God can do with your unyielded vessel. It's too much much dirt in there for water to come through there and I told you that out of your belly rivers of living water would be there but right now it's a stale pond because you're tired of being tired and you're mad of being mad and you're angry with being angry but I'm here to tell you bad news baby it's about to get worse I know you won't be at church next Sunday. I know you're going to be virtual in that brunch. But get ready for the haunting of the Holy Ghost. Baby, it's not going to be a UFO and it's not going to be Elvis. It's going to be the yes that you recanted. It's going to be the commitment that you ignore it. It's going to be the vows that you put on the altar and fooled around and got some good sex and left them vows where you found it. And now the hand of God is coming to grab you by your neck. I'm working in here to let you know you can sit in this until... Asaph. Mm. Watch me. Asaph. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to hurry up. We didn't have a concert and all this, but I got to feed you all. I'll be a bad parent. Asaph was watching the example of David, uh, the exemplar of David, and what he did was he started to write uh, what he observed about how David won. Uh, uh, he, how I win is information to you, and how I conquer is a textbook for you. So watching me ain't necessarily bad unless you worship me. If you worship me, your watching me won't work for you. The real truth is it's easier to get to know me because I'm standing before God. You don't want to know dude behind me. Lord have mercy. So you want to get to know me. And that's why when I disappoint, you disappear. Until... I'm almost there. <laughs> yeah. So Asaph writes from the outside. Please be seated. Asaph writes from the outside looking in. I didn't go through it, but I watched David do it. I didn't fight through it, but I saw that. I was assisting. I'll get there later. And I watched. I watched. And I watched. I don't want to be you guys. <laughs> There's so many people that want this seat that's too little to sit in it and it's like they're trying to get on a, a, a Harley Davidson and they not even learn how to ride a bike with tricycles yet and they want this pressure and they want these problems and they want these judgments and they want these opinions no what they really want is a life of karaoke honey that's not a real concert that ain't your destiny you are playing in my face by acting like you got what you don't have because you you can pretend to be whatever you've been around. It does not mean that you have it. Mm. 
What I'm trying to say is Asaph wasn't the guy, but he watched the guy go through. And he was so smart and sensitive prophetically that he was like, I'm not going to make David's suffering go to waste. So if I'm going to watch you go through this, I'm going to make sure I don't. If I'm going to be in this tabernacle with you and I'm going to be one of these facilitators with you and I'm going to help bear this burden with you, I'm going to watch how you rise and how you fall. Pay attention because I'm about to offend a lot of you and I'm about to encourage some of you. But it's going to offend. I'm about to watch. He says, I'm going to watch this. And here's why I'm going to watch this. Are you ready? No, you're not. But are you ready? Because if God is doing it in the leader, it's because he's about to do it in that house. So Asa, I'm telling you now, if you've been watching my life to pray because you're concerned and you heard the gospel and all that, get ready, boo-boo. You're coming right next. If you are tied to this house, what I just went through, I'm telling you prophetically, is headed all over the nation. I was a forerunner of the suffering of the seer. And everyone that sees the future is about to have to learn to fight. It's coming. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm just telling you what's going on. My chaos was prophetic. Wasn't my fault. It was y'all's. So um, when we go, go into this particular circumstance, we see Asaph writing out these observations. He's writing out these perspectives. And then he's going through a very real feeling. Can I preach a little bit longer? Come on, the, the barbecue sauce, the, the ribs ain't tender enough yet. So let me just, he, he goes through realism, 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 realism. Realism. He, 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 he renounces churchianity. He, he refuses to be bilingual. And he, he stops talking like he's in testimony service. Let's have a time. He stops acting like he's trying to practice his initial sermon. And, 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 and Asaph says, well, perhaps because of David's monarchical position and perhaps because of David's destiny, he can't always tell the truth. But David told the truth a whole lot about how he felt. But perhaps Asaph had a different right or different room to say some stuff that David couldn't say. Why? Because Asaph wasn't a king. <laughs> he was a prophet but not the prophet i'll get there later because some of you think because you are a that you are the we got to adjust oh, yeah let's move forward uh, john was a light not the light jesus said i am the john is all your problem is your placement let's have a time now <laughs> forgive me got out of control so asap is riding and he he gets real with god I was, I didn't realize the other day that I'd answered my phone. I feel like preaching and, and I was praying. And my corporate prayer sounds different from my private prayer. <laughs> when I'm leading you in prayer, I'm not necessarily leading myself in prayer. And so I'm not being your prayer leader talking about me, my, and them, and all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm carrying a banner, as it were, to lead you before the God that answers and heareth prayer. But that's not how it is in my prayer time. When I'm by myself with God, I'm like, yo! What are you doing? Do you hate me? What did I? They won't. Yeah, okay. I'm just being honest. Just two days ago, I'm like, what the heck is this for? Does it mean anything? You got people serving you all their life to die of cancer and fasting all their life to never own nothing. What is wrong? So then I said, if you're out there anywhere, if you're out there listening, help me now. Say realism. God can handle your honesty. 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 God, you can be honest with God if you're lying to yourself. I said God can handle your honesty. You can be honest with God if you're in denial. God can handle your honesty. Verse 4 says, they look stronger than me. Come on, let's, let's move. They look stronger than me. Uh, they don't look like they have my troubles. They're not plagued, diseased. Look like all of their days are good. Their pride compassionate about them. And they, they, they choose violence with me. I be minding my business. And all of a sudden, somebody's got something to say and something to do. and something to, they, they posture themselves against progress. 
Yeah. That's what they were doing to Asaph and David because anywhere there is worship, there has to be some form of garrison to prevent the identity of the true God from being known. So wherever you've got a worshiper, you're going to have an antagonist that sets him up against somebody that's going to live in solidarity or sold out to the one true God. Because what that does is if I frustrate the worshiper, the true God is veiled. If I can make sure that the real God is not seen, I can blind the follower. And he says, I write, and he says, yo, the reason all of this is vexing is because in verse 10, what Asaph is writing in the journal of life and in the journal of worship and in the journal of process and in the journal of progress is this. He says, and his people return hither. God's people watch this and decide that they don't want it. They look at it and be like, yes, this is what it takes. Maybe I'll just be moral. Open up. I'll be a kind person. I'll, I'll be nice and considerate with liberty and justice for all. You saw where they got us? America. You've got to live up to a different constitution. One that is holy. One that is governed by a lamb that has no spot. One that loves everybody the same. One who rules with justice around his throne. Not in ink, but around the throne is justice. You've got to tap yourself into him. He expresses himself before God. Will you pinch your neighbor real quick? Because they mad at me, but I don't care, BB. Will you scratch him real quick and say, neighbor, let it out before you go crazy. You won't clap your hands because you don't want to believe the fact that your lack of sanity is because of your current suppression. The devil drives people crazy when he makes them hold it in. And we now have a normal view of a man who lets it out. If you thought praise and worship was about I, I got to praise and, or with my hands lifted up or the banners of the flag. Those are wonderful, just wonderful accoutrement to who we are and what we do. But that ain't got nothing to do with praise and worship. Praise and worship has to do with your frustration. Praise and worship has to do with your aggravation. Praise and worship has to do with your agitation. And if you can't give it to God, don't give it to Michelle, Ray Ray, Ebony, Pookie. Because God can do more with it than they can. As a matter of fact, God will use what you share to heal you. Them Negroes are fickle. All you need to do is offend them in a minute. And they're going to share everything you said. Because lonely people overshare. Be seated. Mm. verse 12 11 and 12 we're almost there I promise you 11 and 12 are the meanderings watch me listen the mental acrobatics the emotional olympics mm, mm, mm. watch it tomorrow of a man or a woman that only wants to please God mm, fame is okay but I want to please him you liking me is okay, but I don't really like you, but I want to please him. <laughs> I could see you in heaven in the waiting line, and I'd be perfectly fine, but I just want to please him. I, I, I could marry whoever I want or not get married and just live like an emotional, romantic tumbleweed all around the 4070 window and the 1040 window and sow my raw oats like I came. But I want to please him. I want to please him. And here is why it's quiet in the room. Everybody thinks it's the reverse. Y'all have been bought into a Christianity that makes you think that God is supposed to please you. Therefore, what he does not bring to pass with your selfish, self-centered, democratic, republican, I'm grown first amendment tail millennial tail thing you think that it's God's job to bless you ah, and because you're biblically illiterate you think that blessing you means he gives you what he wants but blessing you means signing off on you blessing you means putting his guarantee on you blessing you means endorsing you 
Make the devil mad and slap the people say, I am blessed. A Hyundai and I'm blessed. A Kia Sophia and I'm blessed. I'm blessing the city. I'm getting caught up. I'm blessing the field. Blessed when I'm rich. Blessed on public aid. It ain't got nothing to do with what's in my bank account. And everything to do with what's on my head. The hand of the Lord is on me. I'm blessed. Ten. Does God know this? Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll take about ten. Does God know this? Now watch me. These are the reflections of somebody close to God. These are not the reflections of somebody in distance. So this is a fasting person, a praying person. The scripture word for a Chris is devout. This is a seer. He understands spiritual matter, uh, uh, invisible prognosticates. And things that are used to be able to, to forecast what's about to come. He's well skilled in all of that. And he says now, he says, I, I don't even know if any of this is, is worth any of it. Because I'm watching all of this. And now, watch, watch the way that this is, 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 is situated in verse 12. These are the ungodly who prosper. No, I'll go there. Y'all didn't hear what I read. The un. There is a prosperity for the ungodly. And I'm over here like, blessed is the man that walketh not in the council. If you be honest, it'll bless you. And nor sitteth in the sea. And you, tree ain't withering and root ain't, but here is the ungodly. Who pay no tithes off their only fans. And they become wealthy, happy, travel the world. Don't get uncomfortable because I'll come harder. They, 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 they experience everything that they want to in life. And I have had to resolve the fact that if I'm going to obey, I've been preached, E.P., into this conundrum of thinking that sanctif sanctification and suffering and success can't coexist. That if I'm going to be sanctified, I will suffer. And under the canopy of suffering, there is sickness, sadness, instability, inconsistency and I'm just supposed to act like it's the will of God concerning me and that's success I got saved to be sad saved, come on let's go saved to be alone saved to not know who I am come on open up saved to not know who to trust saved to always feel like I've got to do everything by myself as a matter of fact under the regime of hell I had all of the support I needed in the direction of instruction it was not until I left Satan's kingdom and got translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light that I needed to now live by faith Woo. my fears materialize everything I needed the thing I fear the most came upon me but when I started to live a life of faith then I had to in fear you don't trust the unseen in faith you live by the invisible Asaph is ruminating he's writing all of this and there's this one word I'm certain it won't bless you unless you love linguistics and transitory language that makes one sentence mean something and it's transformed or rearranged by one word. I did feel that. That did happen. She did do this. He did do that. This was my tra trauma. This was my background. My family did do that. My job did do that. All of this happened. I want to know how long it's going to take for you to get over what happened. Mm. 
Come on, let's open up. I, I, I think that many of you are stuck in the fact that it happened that you cannot heal because you want everybody around you to acknowledge that it happened. But you don't need nobody else around you to agree with your version. I'm working in here. Your variation, because here's the real truth. Scream, put your weight on it. You're going to be a hero in somebody's story and you're going to be a villain in somebody else's story. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Some people will say you saved their lives. Others will say you ruined it. But both can be true. That is a part of the conundrum of this thing called life. And the human experience. I got it real right over there. I got it real wrong over there. That was a seamless victory. I'm creeping up to my point. And that was a bloody defeat. You ain't even used to ups and downs. But you want to run around the church. I felt that. Watch me. Shh. I remember that. Can't get it out of my head. Lodged in my life. Let's go. Lodged in my belief. Lodged in my convictions. My relationship protocols and processes, they are there. And because pain becomes a policy. When you've experienced a certain level of pain, you make it the rubric by which you engage relationships and or not. I won't give you a chance because I did that and I made a contract with myself that I never let that happen again. I'll be like Jesus on another day. Come on, let's go to church. I'll die for the name of love on another day. Now, I'm not telling you to be taken advantage of. Cut, cut these negroes off. You have my blessing. I, I, I kick them all out. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that sometimes you're the problem. And sometimes you're the issue. And maybe the one you need to be diagnosing is yourself. But if you're like me, sometimes it's hard to get through to up until you get into the He said, writes this, and he says, this is my reality. Look, look at the person next to you that has the darkest color. Say, neighbor, the only thing your reality needs is revelation. Now tell them, your revelation is more powerful than your reality. I want you to catch this in the holy. I, there's, like a sm there's like a smoke starting to form up here. I, I feel weird. Come on. Tell them your revelation is going to break the power of your current reality. Look at somebody else who has faith because your neighbor ran out of faith. Look at somebody else and say, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy your reality is changing by the power of revelation. I felt that. I said that. I meant that. That happened. It hurt. There's facts. There's receipts. There's proofs. These are my experiences, my explorations. Until. Do you know what the devil always is shocked by, May Dupree? When a spirit filled believer under the unction, Katadista Rohotare of the Holy Ghost changes their mind. I feel like preaching right now. What do you think repentance really is? I wish I had somebody slap your neighbor and say, I changed my mind. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I changed my mind. I felt this way until I was focused on that until mad about that until had this view until I could still feel it until I could still hear it until I could still see it until it means that there will be feelings experiences longings desires wants fears focuses that have a threshold a threshold, 
a place where they have to stop. I want this out of a job. I want this out of a mate. Help me, Lord. I want this out of an ideal outcome. But all my wants have to be dropped off at a threshing floor before I cross over into this sanctuary. I'm not bringing my wants to the altar. I don't want, y'all don't want to talk. I'm leaving my wants at the door. I ain't scared of you. And when I'm bringing to the altar is my heart. Some of us leave our hearts at the door and bring our wants to the altar. This is why that until is the change of events. This is why that until is the turnaround. This is why the until is that decision to no longer stay out here and because I am in need of something. Come on, we're almost there. You've been so courageous. Take a deep breath real quick. Come on, deep, 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 deep. Exhale. The Holy Spirit of God is here this morning to rebuke you about your lack of contentment. I know you didn't know I was going there. You suffer from a lack of contentment. Because you, you associate contentment with complacency. And you associate contentment with stagnation. I don't care if you're uncomfortable. You associate contentment with not being able to move forward. But contentment is not paralysis. Contentment is level consciousness. I'll give it to somebody around the corner if you don't want it. I don't care. I'm used to rejection. <laughs> You got to be aware of the level you're on and what you have. It's about life appraisal and it's about life budgeting. It's about emotional management. I'm going there, but today I'm here. I want that, but today I need this. And many of us are living in the in-between place of what brings us joy and what brings us proof. Because a lot of what we think is happiness is our ability to silence our critics our naysayers, enemies and opponents, and we're still not content. Beautiful gowns, but the facade of life has done what the facade do. Got tired. Until. There's this facade nature now where Asaph writes, and he brings David up here. I'm almost done, and he's addressing his contentment. I felt like this up until. I want to know how many of you have really embraced the concept of being abased and abound. I want to know, you're quiet, so I know I'm hitting a vein. I want to know how many of you have rooted your happiness in the material or the applause, the celebration, the acknowledgement of those that watch you and your life. I want to know how many of you would succeed more if people said I'm proud versus those of you that don't care about the cheerleading or the, the pom-pom dancers around your next victory. If you, if you can only get victory when somebody can verify it, when somebody can celebrate it, you won't have a real sustaining victory. You got to get an until moment. I'm in my feelings. In my flesh, in my experience, in my story, in my statistic, in my reality. Here is where we start talking about the presence of God's stuff. All of that stuff dies before him. What I went through matters. What happened to me harmed me. That did occur. These events did transpire up until. Now, if these moments in your life linger in you emotionally, mentally, relationally, it means that you've not come to the precipice where you've been willing to make the divine exchange between your feelings and his, and your wounds and his will. That's the until moment. Every altar is about until. Now, this is, I didn't even take communion. God help me. Take it in your car. This is the... Mm. Oh, Jesus. Y'all messed me up. I saw that crack. I got convicted. <laughs> the point in the place of divine exchange is where you get the grace to do what you don't know how to do. And I feel like what the Spirit of God said is to teach this thing about sanctuary, about gathering in the presence of God, is this... You've got to be able and available enough 
to relinquish whatever owns, controls, dominates your existence until you get to the place of the threshold of the sanctuary. Now, for some, the sanctuary may legitimately be a literal place. God has always anointed and ordained literal places. But for others of us, it might be an internal place. Maybe your life is a little too noisy. Maybe your friendships are a little too noisy. Maybe your decision making is a little too noisy and you need to figure out what you need to do to drop your cares at a certain place and level up until you come in there. Now, if you are going to find this place called sanctuary, this until place, you've got to be willing to stop looking at, focusing at, studying on what you think God is allowing in the lives of the others. Because you can't really be in the presence of God and be in comparison and contrast with them. Hello. Please don't force me. <laughs> if, if, if you're going to live in such a way where, where, where the, 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 the basis of your devotion is God making you keep up with who you feel like is doing and getting and receiving what they don't deserve, it means you have deified what you think you do. And it does not mean that this reality, it might be that it looks like the wicked are prospering. And it might look like the wicked are advancing and the wicked are moving forward. It might look like that. The real question is, why are you looking at that? The reason you're distracted is because of your lack of reverence for the sanctuary. The presence of God. Repeat this after me. I see it. The presence of God. Say, the presence of God, presence of God. is the safest place from my perspective. Say, the presence of God is the safest place from my perspective. One more time. The presence of God is the safest place from my perspective. When you get a perspective of something, so something can happen. This is why we got the synoptic gospels. Something can happen in one place, and several of us can see, several of us can see it in different ways. So I could trip somebody, and they could fall. But based upon your proximity, your distance, where you are around the circumstance and the situation, it is going to absolutely predicate how you see it. So your perspective does not have to be everybody else's reality. And people who are committed to not being disciplined to going into God's presence, their abode is their perspective. So I feel it, so it is. I think it, so it makes sense. And what you feel and what you think don't make sense because I've been living with me. And me told me, Lord have mercy, that I was right about thee. And so because I heard it from myself or I thought it and I felt it and it's real. And I'm in a generation that don't want to be denied of their feelings and denied of their opinions and denied of their thoughts. I'm going to hold to how I feel because I'd rather feel than die. And that's normal. That's natural. That's supposed to be that way. That's how your physics work. It's supposed to change when you come into the sanctuary. And the sanctuary does not reverse the event. It breaks the influence of the action. You stabbed me. I'm bleeding. But I went to the hospital. <laughs> you robbed me. Stole the stuff out of my car. And I had a club on my steering wheel and an alarm that worked. It was really protected. And you got away with it. But I went to the cops. When life lives. And future is future. When questions are questions. There is one place I got to go with. It ain't the hospital. It ain't the public aid office. It's the sanctuary. My life has, is doing stuff. My purpose is, is confusing me. I feel punished by what God wants me to do and be. Where can I go? Because if I go to the family reunion, they're going to encourage me in disobedience because they want to understand me. Mm. I'm sorry, Aria. They want to understand me. And so because they want to understand me, I'll disobey God to make sure at least they'll understand. And I want that up until, <laughs> up until, up until. Last night, 
send that. Okay. There's a flight of stairs. It's like on the, the second level or something. And then you go over this area, you go in, and then your living room is weird. It's, it's odd. Wait. Not yet. <laughs> There's a very unique hallway in where you stay. The hallway is there. And every time you're there, you feel really weird. It's, it's like a, it's a moment of thought. It's a moment of, uh, 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 turn around real quick, face the, the, the back. It's a moment of this very often where it almost feels like somebody's following you, behind you. If you got this new thing getting in and out of doors and cars, you making sure you're being aware of your surroundings, watching yourself. God says what's been happening is he's been making you more aware of his surroundedness concerning you. You are about to come into your until moment. I, I was this. That did, my, I feel, I'm telling you, I'm about to get loose. This did, this, this was the anticipation. This was the fear. This was the hope. This was the, yeah, this was the backup plan. Until. I prophesy him into his until moment that the perspective of God, the perspective of heaven, let it be why I feel the ground shaking. Pray in the Holy Ghost real quick. Up until this thing comes to full manifestation, full potential, full intercessory depth, full power to replicate and to multiply. I prophesy. I what is this? That pre let it let it increase on them. The ability to teach the, the difference between the holy and the profane. Let something happen on the inside of him where a generation need be circumcised by the Torah and the Mishnah and the Pentateuch. Burn him, 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 burn him. Until, whew, until, sit there up until, cry there up until, be heard there up until, be confused there up until, be uncertain there up until. I prophesy to your uncertainties, your insecurities, the things that you're unsure about, the things that you are in the middle. Let this be a season of holy confirmation for you, a season of the answers of God concerning you. May you be like Asaph, who testifies of your limited perspective, your limited understanding, your limited opinion, your limited view. And may you be brought among those that know how to get before the presence of God. I'll leave my feelings at the door. I'll leave my pain at the door. I'll leave my offense at the door. I'll leave my view at the door. I'll leave my fears at the door. I'll leave my passion at the door. I'll leave my desire at the door. All I want to do is to be found in the sanctuary where I can have some one-on-one -on -one time, some quality conversation, where I can get some answers, where I can focus, where I can see, where I can hear, where I can be strengthened, where I can be concentrated where I can be healed where I can be lifted where I can be delivered he knows he knows how you feel that's not the hard part the hard part is what you're willing to do with how you feel and where you're willing to place those feelings. All of this is here, but I'm not gonna sit in the fact that this stuff is unfair and painful and aggravating and frustrating. I'm gonna find my frustrations in the right place, hands lifted everywhere. From here to there. Come on, just start to worship him. I feel the spirit of prophecy. From here to there. From here to there. God is a God that will cross you over. He'll bring you into 
Something powerful is happening. I'm letting you go. He'll cross you over. He'll bring you in too. He'll move you out. He'll bring you in. But you've got to be willing to be found where he is. Now, God's asking for something in this moment. He's asking for a brand new commitment to his presence, to his house, to, to his sanctuary. He's asking for divine access to, to the, his presence and to who he is and how he is. In Jesus' name, libraries and catalogs. Father, blow him into the manuscripts of heaven now. Show him what you've been writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. Separate him in his generation now. May there never be another. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, mark him. Lift your hands and worship him now. Something's happening. This is going to be a marking moment. God is marking people. Come. There, God is marking. Hurry up now. Come on. God is marking people. Watchmen. 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 Every gap. There is a gap because of you. There is a gap because of you. There is a gap. Man the gate. Man the gate now. On the wall, Rennie. On the wall. Oh, yeah. And you'll see the wolf coming from afar. You'll see the lion coming from afar. You'll see the amber alert. You'll hear it. Not just in this church, but in this nation. I've got bigger for you. Oh, no. Oh no, put your hand on a stomach. You will not settle, but you will study. I impart wisdom, wisdom, no settling, no settling, no settling. Come on, let's get in here. It's moving now. Oh. Until we're done. Your feelings are not a safe place. Your, your feelings are not a safe place to house perspectives. Your feelings are not a safe or reliable place to retrieve information from. You can feel them. That's a part of your humanity. That what are you going to do when you don't know what to do with what you feel? You've got to have an until moment. Watch me. God's glory is coming in here in just a minute. After I say this, something's going to fall real heavy. If you will open up and yield, your life will not be the same. God is the God of holy ultimatums. He is a God of love, of mercy, of forgiveness. He's long-suffering, full of compassion. But he makes lines all the time. I feel like we're in a line moment in this season. God is calling for people to come on over and cross over into a maturity, into a place of responsibility that they've not desired or seen before. It's going to mean that we're going to have to make the daily habit of relinquishing what we want, how we feel, what we're owed, what we do, all of that at the sanctuary. The book of Ecclesiastes says, watch your foot when you go into the house of the Lord. Don't walk into the direction of the wrong stuff when you're supposed to be before him. I'm going to give you a minute real quick. Every hand lifted, every eye closed. Very individual. Very individual. Very individual. Ignore your neighbor. Forget about the fact that you're at 7359. There is a strong drawing in the spirit now. For those of you that have moved subconsciously and just got distracted. I feel this. I feel, and, and, and the Lord wants to arrest thousands of people around the world in the prisons of their feelings. There is a way for the feeling to be valid, but the reaction to be wicked and the response to be wrong. And Asaph said, I didn't know where else to go or what else to do with what was boiling up in my life. I'm so overwhelmed. I have three minutes. I'm donating two of the minutes to everybody in the room that's overwhelmed. 
run to this altar as if your life depended on it and just go after God for yourself now. You have two minutes. I'm stopping. Run. When you get there, throw them hands up and cast your care. I said, cast your cares. No, it's too quiet. Cast your cares. I want the stress up there. The worry up there. The pain up there. Uh-huh. I want the fatigue up there. Oh, there you go. I hear it now. The frustration. Give it there. Lord, I have all of this. I'm focused on it. All of this I'm worried about it. All of this that I am in need of and all of this that I desire. Peace to you, sweetheart. It You have one minute, 39 seconds. Cast your cares now. Lord, I'm frustrated about this. I'm aggravated about this. This is a series about praise and worship. But I don't want to just give you lip service. I want to give you life service. So I'm not going to give you hallelujah right now. I'm not going to give you thank you, Jesus, right now. What I'm giving you is, Lord, I'm mad. Lord, I'm frustrated. Lord, this is bothering me. Lord, I'm uncomfortable. Lord, this is painful. Lord, can you do something? Lord, where are you? Lord, do you hear me? Lord, do you see me? That's worship. Come on, do it now. I don't hear you. I said, do it now. Come on, do it now. He, you got 44 seconds. Stop playing. Every care you have. Every care you have. Every concern you have. Every stress point. Every trigger. Everything in the way of your obedience. Everything in the way of your being able to move forward. Your frustrations. Your distractions, your concentration points, your wishes, your hopes, your dreams, your calendars, your goals, deadlines, timelines.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We're done. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. I'm going to dismiss you. Thank you, Jesus. Christ alone. In the Savior, come on, say we make sure we can make sure. Shh. Let's get our communion real quick so we can go. Christ alone, you're my cornerstone. The weak are made strong, and the Savior's love is through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Father, you've given us, if you don't have a communion cup, please lift your hand, will you? They'll come and serve you. Praise God. Everything turned around when I found the place of my perspective. The problem may not change. My perspective can be touched in the sanctuary, though. We must leave our place and go to his. Does everyone have a communion cup? We have some again. Blessed Savior, your presence is everything. Your presence is everything. Does everyone have their communion cup? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we were, Corey, close them doors unless somebody's bladder is about to explode, please. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you that we were foreigners. We were aliens. We had no name, no room, no place, no reason to be until you came and redeemed us by the power of your blood. We have no right to live for ourselves, from ourselves, or by ourselves. Fathers, we celebrate the final supper of this covenant and era. We thank you for entry into a new day, a new way, a new way to live and think, a new way to be. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And I thank you that you call whoever you want to call to the table. And I thank you that you invite those that don't feel like they have room and right to come. I thank you for those that have been called away and kicked out of the table. Thank you for those that... We're told that they would never belong at the table, that they were too expensive to hurt the other people at the table. That a hymn could never be loved. And I thank you that your blood covers it all. So we take this body together. Come on, y'all hurry up. The glory is moving. We take this body together. I'm not the... I wish I had a... Uh...
I need a travail in the house real quick. And without the shedding of blood, come on, let's, without the shedding of blood, I can't control what's happening now. Without the shedding of blood, 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 there is no remission. But God sent his only son. And in the likeness of flesh, he condemned sin in the flesh. Let's take this now. Come on, let's go. I want everybody in here that's been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's been redeemed. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless, not flawless, faultless before the Lord with exceeding great joy. To him be our blessings, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Scream, so be it.